Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another devlog. I haven't done one in a while, so I thought I'd uh, catch up a little bit, uh, especially because we've got quite an interesting new feature. Uh, you may have noticed that on the server list, we've got this uh, the test server called like it's called Physics Test Server at the moment, and uh, that's because I've uh, recently added uh, in a, within the test builds a physics engine called uh, it's called Beppu Physics. Um, but it's like the same as every other sort of physics engine you encounter normally in a game. Uh, in Sky Nations, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time, but it's kind of awkward because uh, getting a physics engine to work very fast with a very small set of uh, data rather than using meshes or things like that on the server side was quite a, a difficult task. Anyway, so this means that this part of this is the is going to change how we do. Uh, the steering and the propulsion and things like that because uh, one of the things that's one of the things I want to change for combat and uh, overall sort of change to make it a bit better and a bit more intuitive but also make it a bit more expandable rather than the current system we have so the current system uh, out now not the physics one is if you run into a ship you stop uh, if two ships hit each other they just stop you can't do a lot of things with that like and in internally and from from my perspective and it's kind of like not very intuitive and kind of feels quite awkward if you run into something you suddenly stop that's not what happens in real life if you hit something with some kind of like force it doesn't stop there's a reaction and it moves so if I uh, get onto this ship like steering it as normal at the moment I haven't changed how propulsion works um, in terms of like the controls that'll change a little bit later but one of the things I have done is that now you'll notice if I knock into something Oh, just on, <laughs> just on dismounted there. You see, I can push it along, and it starts to rotate as well. So when you hit things, they're gonna move. Okay, that's the first like kind of thing. So this adds to like a lot of things in in a lot of ways. So like, that's cool, right? You can move things, you can push things. I mean, it's useful for like when you're building things um, to be able to shunt things around with smaller ships, rather than having to sort of like deal with a very large ship that hasn't got its thrusters yet. You haven't made the power, things like that. But it's also useful in combat. You can ram people, knock them off course. Say if they're trying to, uh, they're trying to escape through a gate. If you ram them out of the gate and keep them moving, then they can't escape. For instance. So you can see I'm just pushing this around, and it'll rotate my ship as well because we're, because I'm pushing into it and it's moving on its axis. So now this like overall, this is kind of the, the just the being able to push things is quite a small concept, but it adds to everything. So I've rewritten pretty much everything to do with collision within the game. Um, the ships have gone back to being completely simulated on the server side. Previously what we had is that the, the collision would happen on both sides and then the, and the server sort of version of that would it would check it but you'd end up with problems with like the ships due to latency they'd be in slightly different positions from where the client that's driving it, thing it thinks it is and where the server thinks it is so you'd fire cannons and you get that problem that you may have come into where you're moving really fast and you fire a cannon and it explodes because the cannonball is being fired on the server and its position is whether it's coming from the ship where it thinks the ship is and then your ship updates from the the driving client and it sort of like skips a little forward a little bit over the top of the cannonball so that's one of the things that's fixing that but it also means that cannonballs are now like fully physics simulated in it and so they're, they're a bit more natural in their groove but also we can do some more interesting things and it's a lot faster like on the code side of it as well, so if I uh, the curve like the curve for the cannibals is a bit more natural. And it also gives me a more sort of unified way to do it. So if I give myself a, just an iron cannon here, cannonballs. Uh, at the moment, they actually shoot a lot further than they did at, did previously. I'm not sure whether I keep that. I kind of actually do like it because it does make it a bit. When when two ships are moving quite fast, it's very difficult at the moment to hit um, other ships. So if I just stick this down on here, oh, and uh, give myself some power here. Okey dokes. Oh, we got something. Oh, we can actually fire my cannons. <laughs> and uh, save set in this area. 
So I'm just using the test a copy of like the the data from one of the one of the community servers. So I have some stuff to work with. If you fire that, we'll notice that it goes a little bit further. The arc's a lot more natural now, and that like sort of applies to everything. So it's much easier to build like explosions and forces and stuff like that that apply to everything rather than having to write special cases for things, which is what it was like in previously. But also we can do things like now if I. Uh, I uh, just unhook from that. I fire this cannon. Hopefully, it'll hit. Oh, <laughs> so that was a bit of an extreme case, but basically, uh, when you hit something, it will knock it away as well. So cannons are like almost a zoning sort of thing as well now, where you can knock things sideways and, and move them by hitting them with cannons, um, which is a bit more sort of. Is it feels better when to be when you're driving and you're kind of more aware of collisions and things like that, but also. It's kind of a useful tool, and it'll be an interesting thing for like newer weapons as I redo the combat system and add more things like that. And uh, the other thing that's been like a crazy suggested thing for a long time, and it's been really within the old system, it's very difficult to do because of how it worked. Um, and that is docking, uh, as in like docking two ships together, being able to fix two ships together. So that's like useful for. You have a big ship and you want to go mining. You can't really get your big ship into mining places and stuff like that. So you you want to be able to take a bunch of little ships with you. But if that's the case, then you're say you're just one player that's going out to mine or something like that. You want to be able to uh, take a smaller ship with you, or like your mining ship has loads of lasers and stuff, and not necessarily very fast. And you want to be able to take that with you. And previously, you you basically need two players, or you take one ship and not the other, which is kind of a shame. And it's and uh, so. I've kind of got an early prototype of docking working with this new physics system because it's a lot easier to do things like this. Um, so if I give myself a clamp, which is what the iron's called at the moment, it's not quite finished yet, and it there's like needs some sound effects. You can see, see, there's no like hand model for it at the moment either. <laughs> so if I uh, stick this on here, now I, what I want to do is like fly under another ship and fix it to it. So I use this one here as its closest. I'll stop here. Ooh. So there's a little bit of drift as well with the physics system. So like when you turn corners and things like that, if you're going really fast in one direction, then you suddenly turn previously. What it would do is it would just you would just be going fast forward as much as you were, and you wouldn't drift or anything like that. But now you'll have like you you have drift because it's based on velocity. So you move really fast in one direction, then suddenly turn. You're still going to travel in that direction for a little while, but you'll also be pushing in the way that you've actually turned as well. Which adds a bit more skill to driving in a lot of ways. So let me just fix this down. So I've got this. Uh, I just clamped it. There's no sound effect or anything yet, but you can see that now I'm moving. I'm actually pulling it with me, and the uh, the mass actually adds up. So if you have like, if you connect to a really 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 big ship, it's going to be really awkward to drive it. Like it's going to be so hard to pull it with a much smaller ship like this one. Whereas this one's kind of like not huge, but it's 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 bulky and it's kind of awkward to turn a little bit but as you can see you can just clamp on things like this so there's a couple of rules with that is that a ship that's been like so this this ship here that's docked to this one can't dock to another one so you don't end up with like really long chains with chains of docking things which would end up with uh, sort of like it would be a, a bit of a collision nightmare for the server oh, I just killed myself by accident <laughs> if I go jump back to there so and the other and the other rule is basically that uh, it's, it's kind of like the inverse of that. So basically, once you have a ship docked to a ship, you can have as many ships docked to that one ship that's been docked to, but you can't dock ships on top of docked ships, if that makes sense. Um, it'll probably make more sense when you try it, and <laughs> it's kind of a hard thing to explain. <laughs> a little bit of lag there. The recording software doesn't massively help. Um, so that's, that's docking. I mean, you can you can imagine the possibilities, you can sort of make bigger ships with it in a lot of ways uh, if we just land on this ship here uh, this ship doesn't actually have any power so, uh, I'm just using admin commands to cheat this way here <laughs> so if I give this a bit more power so we can get it going Actually, see that I'm able to. Uh, oh, it's a bit jerry, but I'm actually able to push this other ship 
with the other ship, so you can actually have like if I turn this to a right angle, I could push it so it could turn faster, things like that. I'm not sure whether I'll leave the steering in for dock ships. I might not do because it kind of becomes a little bit awkward um, to deal with for both players and for like the and like uh, there's a bunch of like related sort of balancing problems with that. But uh, it's kind of an interesting concept. You can obviously attach ships together if you wanted to make a bigger ship, uh, like I said before, which could be interesting. I mean, you could have. If you want, like, if you wanted to lay them out at max size, you could have 32, like, each, each the max size of each ship is 32 cubed. So you could have a line of three ships on each max sort of like width, docked onto one. That would that would be like, uh, oh, it's like 72, not 72, uh, 90 something blocks long. Um, so that would be quite an interesting concept. I'd be interesting to see what people do with that. So yeah, that's uh, that's like that's docking. I mean, it's it's been a thing that I've wanted to do for a long time. It just wasn't possible in the original like, sort of system that I devised, and the the collision has always been the most complex sort of and sort of CPU demanding part of the game. Uh, moving to a physics engine is awesome, but it's it took a lot of um, experimenting. Like I did most of the experimenting over Christmas, and I tried a bunch of different prototypes of how to represent ships and how to have that block-to-block -block collision in a physics engine which typically sort of deal with very primitive shapes um, and if you do think like mesh collision it's it's quite slow and uh, you don't really want to sort of represent them as meshes on the server because they representing a mesh is a lot of data that, and we want to sort of reduce the amount of memory used in this game so yeah there's Docking, we've got physics. Uh, if you run into ships, you can have like domino effect. They move on. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is that we've got a uh, we've got a test server up at the moment called uh, Physics Test Server, I believe it's called that. Uh, I might change the name. Uh, and that's basically to test all of this, right? Um, with a physics engine, it can be a little bit unpredictable. What like I've tested done a lot of tests. I've tested like 200 ships running into each other all at the same time, things like that, and it's all worked really fast and worked really well, uh, much better than my expectations. And I want to. The problem is that when you put that into a real like live environment, it's difficult to work out what people are going to do and how which bits are going to slow down. So I've got this test server up to work out if it's if the physics system as a whole is viable and everything, and it's all running fast and all that sort of stuff. So it'd be great if you could go and play on that. The the way you do that. I'll, I'll put it in the description as well. Um, is that you right click in your, in your Steam library, go to Sky Nations, right click properties, and then uh, the little properties window will pop up. And what you want to do is you want to go to uh, test, like change, go to the betas tab, and then cl click test branch. And with the test branch, you'll be able to log into the physics server. The reason for that is that uh, the test branch is like a different client with all the physics stuff in. Uh, whereas the the current server is not compatible with uh, the current uh, sorry the test server is not currently compatible with the the current client that's sort of released and then when you want to join back onto normal servers you just have to change the branch back to the default one um, it sounds a little complicated but it's actually quite easy uh, it's what most Steam games sort of use for their little test versions I'm not entirely sure if it's if you can do branches on um, the demo version but I'll look it up if I can. I will. Uh, so then, because uh, we want as many people to test it out as possible. Uh, none of the stuff on the test server will save because uh, it's just a test server. It'll be up and down and stuff, and I'll be like uh, trying to fix things that I find that are wrong on it. But what I'll probably do is write a script on it that fills all like crates with just random amounts of like items, so you can just get whatever you want and sort of build whatever you want that way. You don't have to sort of waste your time progressing. Uh, for a test server where it's not going to like mean anything because it won't be saved. Whereas you can just build whatever you like and sort of mess around with it, and mess around with the physics. So uh, that's been sort of the devlog and the stuff I wanted to talk about. Uh, I wanted to get sort of this update out today for the physics, but unfortunately I've had like uh, the internet's been out on my at my house and the phone line's been out for uh, over a week now, and the power's been going on and off as well. So <laughs> just due to the sort of weather at the moment where I live, but. That's been like a massive pain, and it's been made it basically so I couldn't post this devlog. Um, so that's been a bit of an, an annoyance for uh, sort of getting the update out on time, but we'll see. Anyway, check out the test server, and I'll, t I'll see you guys later.